Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. With the release of the trailer for the brand new James Bond film, No Time to Die, we thought it would be interesting to show you how to recreate the typography being used to advertise the film using only the basic shape tools in Adobe Illustrator. Let's head onto the computer now and we'll show you how to do this. Okay, so here we are in Illustrator and as usual you can download this exact same template file from the link in the description and follow along from home. So on our left hand artboard we have the vectorized version of the text we're going to be recreating today and on the right hand side we have an official poster for the movie and this is just a JPEG image that we're going to be using for reference to trace this text and recreate it with the basic shape tools. So as you can see if I zoom in it is pixelating, it's not vectorized in anyway and it's also worth noting that we're just going to be focusing on the text so the other elements within this poster we're not going to be looking at but do let us know if you'd like to see a video on recreating the whole poster or just poster design in general and we'll be sure to add that to our list of videos to make. Now before we start as well it's worth noting that this is actually a font called Futura Black. You can see this is a premium font that you would have to pay for to be able to use in commercial work and we also noticed that that although they may well have used this font it looks like they've manipulated it slightly so things like the letter N and the letter M look like they have been changed slightly to have slightly thinner legs in places but this is quite common practice for design firms to take a base font and manipulate it and customize it to make it a little bit more unique. So with all of that said we can get started and the first thing to note is how perfectly spaced all of this is. This is another thing that's always worth noting when we're designing with more simplified objects and shapes. Being as precise as possible is always a great idea and you can see here the spacing between each of the characters and even sections within each character are all perfectly spaced so there's really nice consistency throughout the type here. So the first thing we want to do is create some guides to adhere to so the other thing with this text is it's all very similar in terms of the width and height. The only characters that slightly differ are the letter O's. If you're not familiar with type design or just the way type is created visually, more often than not curved characters like an O are slightly taller or slightly wider as well than a lot of the other characters and that's purely for optical balance. So even though technically they are slightly taller, optically they appear the same height. That's going to make things nice and easy as well for recreating this type. So what I'm going to do first is create a guide shape for the spacing that's being used between each line and each character. So I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool and because this is just a JPEG raster image we are just going to be eyeballing this but we can get pretty close even with this technique. So I'm just going to drag out a rectangle, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to make this magenta just so it stands out. I'm just going to scale this right across. Holding option or alt on a PC I can click and drag. I'll hold shift as well to lock it on on this vertical plane and I'm just dragging out a copy and I'll drag out one more and you can see my smart guides are coming into play here so I want this to be equally spaced out because each of the characters are the same height like I say apart from the letter O we want these to be equally spaced so my smart guides were showing me there that the spacing between each of these rectangles we've created is equal. Now I'm just going to make another copy of one of these rectangles so again just holding option or alt on a PC and now holding shift I'm just going to rotate this so that we now have a vertical option and I'm just going to place that between some of the characters as well. You can see this is very perfectly spaced and this is extending down for various characters so you can see the middle section of the O here is intersecting and it's aligning with the right edge of the I on the line below. It's the same down at the bottom here, the middle section of the O is aligning with the middle section of the letter D as well so it's really nicely designed this. Very precise. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make one more duplicate and just put it off to the side for now because we may need to use it as a guide later on and I'm actually just going to select all of these and I'm, instead of just keeping these rectangles here I'm actually going to drag out some guides from our rulers. Now if you don't have these rulers appearing again you can go up to view and down at the bottom here we have a rulers option. Now because I already have mine it's saying hide rulers but if you don't have these enabled you can show rulers as well. And what I can then do because 
because these are selected, our rulers will snap to these objects. So what I'm actually going to do first is drag out one more up at the top here. So again, just holding option, look for my smart guides. And I'll do the same down at the bottom. So again, I'll select all of these rectangles. And now where I have my rulers, I'm just going to click and drag, and that's going to drag out a ruler guide, and that will snap to our selection here. And I can also do this from the side as well. So for my vertical rectangles that we've created, I can drag in from the side. So I'll just keep doing this for each of the rectangles we've created until we've got a set of guides, and then we will just remove the rectangles. So the next thing I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool again, and I'm just going to start where we have some guides creating the shape for the character I here. You can see that this rectangle is repeated in other characters. All I need to do here is really just make some duplicates of this and just roughly place them in position right now. So again, holding option and shift here, I can just drag out a duplicate. I'll do the same for the letter E. And with the letter D here, because I've got a guide coming down, I can align it with that guide as well because I know that's where it should be. Same with the letter E over here. We'll work on the letter N now. So again, grabbing the rectangle tool, so I'm just dragging out a rectangle to the width of the legs in the letter N here. And again, I can just hold option and click and drag a copy out. Now for the middle section of the N, what I can do is duplicate one of the larger rectangles that we've already created. And now I'm just going to rotate this to try and match the angle of the M. But before I do that, I'm actually going to take the opacity down. So I'll just take it down to about 50% and that way I can try and align it as closely as I can to the angle of our template poster. So I'm just going to right click, transform, rotate, make sure your preview's checked and I'm just going to bump the up or down arrows on my keyboard to change the rotation here. And I'm just looking to see that the space from the edge of our rectangle to the character on our template file is matching as closely as possible. This looks pretty good. So about 26 degrees, I'll click OK. And you can see we still have our bounding box set to the rectangle, which makes this easy to to scale this up and also adjust the width slightly and match it up with our template as well. So that's why I choose to do it this way. Now I'm going to grab our other two rectangles for the letter N and drop the opacity of them down as well. And that's just so, again, I can see through to our template. And we obviously have these cutout areas. And this is why I kept a copy of our initial rectangle. So this is set up at the size that we wanted to space everything out at. And now I'm going to position this so that we can create cuts that are the same width as the rest of it. So again, I'm just going to right click, go transform, rotate. This is already going to remember what we just set. So it's 26 degrees already, which is perfect. Click OK. I'm actually going to change the color. I'll just go with a cyan, just so we know that this isn't part of the character. This is to be knocked out from our existing shapes. Now this is where it can get a little bit complicated in terms of the appearance. So what I'm going to do is switch to my outline mode, which is command Y, and that's just going to show our paths. So I want this to essentially align with our angled rectangle here. So the best way I've found to do this is to click off our shape and then hover over it until it highlights over one of the anchor points. So I'm going to align the two corner anchor points here and I'm just going to click and drag and it should snap. And now I want to do the same on the other side. So I'm just going to hover over this again, hold option or alt on a PC, click and drag and we'll do the same on this side. Press command Y again to go back to our normal view. The last thing I'll need is a shape to cut off the extending section of our angled rectangle here. So again, I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool. And I'll just drag out a rectangle over the top. Again, making sure I'm aligning with the guide here and then the same on the bottom as well. So I know this looks a little bit messy, but this is just ensuring that we get a precise end product here. So I'm just clicking and dragging over all of these elements we've just created. And then I'm going to use my shape builder tool. So shift M is the shortcut or you can find it over on the left hand side and I'm just going to hold option and remove the sections that we don't need. So I'm just clicking and dragging over each section that we don't need here or you can just click once in the area that you don't need that will also work. And there we are left with our letter N. You can bring the opacity of this back up. So moving on we've got the letter O here and like I was saying before this is the only character that is extending above the, the height of the other characters. But to recreate this I'm just going to grab our 
ellipse tool and I'm just going to look for the smart guide that shows me that we're aligning it to the center of our letter N and then I'm just going to click and drag and hold option or alt on a PC that means it's going to scale out from the middle and you can see this isn't a perfect oval so I am going to have to slightly manipulate this but I'm just looking to try and match the general height of it and the width now I'm actually going to grab my anchor point tool so if I click and hold on the pen tool we have the anchor point tool within here and then I'm going to hover over the left hand anchor point and just click and drag and holding shift this means that the curve is going to be applied equally on either side and I'm just going to try and align our new path so it's slightly closer to our template and don't worry we're only applying this to one side but what we're going to do now is grab the rectangle tool again we'll click and drag and align with our guideline here and then we're just going to use our minus front option within our pathfinder panel again if you don't have any of these panels they can all be found up in the window menu so down here we have pathfinder and we're just going to click minus front and that's just going to leave us with one half of the o hold option to click and drag out a copy i'm just going to align that with the left edge there and then over in my properties panel i can just flip this along the horizontal axis again if you don't have a properties panel you can access this from the window menu so the only thing i need to do is make sure that the right side of the letter o is aligning with our guideline there and now what i can do is select both sides press command g or control g on a pc to group them together and now what we can do again is holding option or alt on a pc i can just copy this o that we've created and drag it down to the other example of the character and all i'm doing here is making sure that it aligns with the rectangle on the left hand side align it up with our guides here i'm just going to double click into our group here and i'm just going to press command c to copy the right hand portion of the letter o i'll double click out and then i'm going to press command f to paste it in place and now holding shift i can just drag this down to align with the rectangle on the left hand side for our letter d now you can see for this letter it is actually too tall so what I need to do is skew this down so I'm just going to hold option and click and drag the top handle so that we can get this aligned I'm going to align it to our guides again and that should work nicely uh, I forgot to create a rectangle for our letter I here but I can just simply drag out another duplicate so we have another situation here where we have some angled elements and it's the exact same process I'm actually just going to grab my rectangle tool take the opacity down again and again I'm going to right click try transform and rotate now you can see this is at a slightly different angle from our letter n so we just have to slightly adjust this again just using the template file for reference just try and align the angle as best you can so i think 14 degrees looks pretty good say okay and again we're just going to adjust the size of the rectangle so that it's covering the whole of the white area of the character below again holding option i'm going to click and drag out a duplicate and you can see that our shape on the right Right hand side is the exact same however our left hand section is actually slightly smaller and again this is an optical thing so i'll show you what i mean i've dragged out another copy of the same rectangle i'll flip this we'll zoom in just so we can see more precisely and if i align the left hand edge you can see that it's just slightly wider than the area we have here so again just with my transform handles i'm just going to bring this in slightly and there we go so again we need to create some rectangles for the areas that need knocked out of the letter so i've actually gone and used our reference rectangle but all i need to do is grab my rectangle tool again and use our ruler guides as reference so again i'll right click on this we'll go to transform rotate 14 degrees it's already set at so i'll just click ok and again i'll go into my outline view so that's command y and i'll go up to the top here and make sure the anchor points are lining up like so and then i can always extend this rectangle down the way and i also want to make sure this is the same on the right hand side so I'll just drag out a duplicate of this I'm just going to make sure that our rectangle on the right hand side is also aligning to the newly created rectangle okay so I'm going to go back to my normal view so command Y last thing we need to do is just grab the rectangle tool and create rectangles above and below just so we're able to get rid of the areas that are extending below this line okay so I'm gonna press shift M for my shape builder tool again and holding option I'm just going to remove all the sections we don't need again the only thing I've not done is create a dividing line from the other side for our right hand object so all I need to do is select the middle section and I'm just going to create a duplicate again we'll flip this round just with our shortcut on our properties panel and then I'm just going to position this just eyeballing it 
it roughly and then I want to make sure our duplicated object is sitting above the object on the right hand side so I can right click go to arrange bring to front select both and then I'm going to use the minus front option in our pathfinder again and that will just remove that area as well the last bit I need to do is just get rid of the areas beneath so selecting them all again press shift M holding option and just dragging across all of these sections and that should get rid of all of them just like that okay so the last thing we need to deal with are the triangle shapes within some of the characters for this I'm actually going to use my rectangle tool again now we could use the star tool or the polygon tool and create a triangle that way however for this I actually find it easier to use my smart guides I can align to the left hand side drag out a rectangle to the same height and width as the triangle then press a on my keyboard for my direct selection tool I'm going to select the bottom right hand anchor point and just click the remove anchor point option and we're left with the triangle that we need then all I need to do is duplicate this so again holding option and dragging and flip this and use my guidelines again just to snap this in place I want to make sure that the rectangle is sitting perfectly between these two triangles so I'm just going to select all three and use my align options up on my control bar just to make sure that it is sitting perfectly between the two again what I can do in this example is click and drag over these three objects group them with command G holding option create a duplicate and I'm actually just going to delete our rectangle on the T below and drag our new T in place and we can do the same with the letter E once we've finished so I'm going to use the same technique for the triangles above and below and this is another unique one where we have an example of optical balance so I'm going to drag out another rectangle here press A for my direct selection and remove the bottom left anchor point now you'll see if I create a duplicate of this so holding option click and drag and we'll just flip this you can see that this is much smaller than our template this is just for optical balance so I'm just going to adjust the height of this one and I will actually grab my polygon tool for our triangle in the middle here if I click and drag now I've already set up a triangle you may well have an actual polygon like this and all I'm doing is using my up and down arrows on my keyboard to change the number of sides so I'm going down to three sides and again if I hold shift that's just going to lock it to this horizontal plane like so I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees so again just holding shift and dragging around it we can rotate this this is actually aligning to the center of the rectangle on the left hand side so you can see that this actually isn't perfectly centered against the rest of the characters as well so this is some more example of the optical balance coming into play but I can just easily adjust the size of this to match and I think that will do so again I'm just going to delete the rectangle on our letter E below I'll select all of the objects from our letter E that we've just created command G to group them together and then I'll drag out a duplicate holding option and there we have it so what I can do now is hide my guides now a quick shortcut to do that is command and the semicolon character or you can go up to view guides hide guides so now we're just left with our text and I'm going to go up to my layers and just turn off our template poster and so we're just left with our text here I can select this and we can obviously select whatever color we want and there you have it so there you have our process for recreating this text in Illustrator using only the basic shape tools to do so. Hopefully we've demonstrated how useful these tools can be and you've learned something along the way. If you have any questions at all or thoughts on the new James Bond trailer, do let us know in the comments down below as we're always intrigued to hear what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and if you haven't already, subscribe for more weekly content. If you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, see the link in the description or visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.